Hey guys, welcome to another IGCSE physics revision video. Today we're going to be going through the topic of electric circuits. So this is the syllabus content that we will be looking at. So I want you to have a quick read and we will begin the video. Uh, so a lot of questions in IGCSE physics requires you to understand circuit diagrams naturally in the topic of electricity. And so there are several components inside a circuit that you should be aware of. This is officially listed in your IGCSE physics syllabus. So make sure you are familiar with all of these components. Obviously some of these components we will dig into a bit more detail in this video, but you should be aware of all of that is listed in this particular photo and in the syllabus. So one of the most important things that we need to be aware of is the differences between a circuit connected in series and a circuit connected in parallel because they are fundamentally different. In a series circuit, we form a single path of current to flow. So basically it's a single loop of a circuit as shown in the left hand side diagram here, but on the right hand side exemplifies a parallel circuit that has multiple branching pathways for electrical current to flow through. Here in this example we've got two branches um, and current can flow through each of these branches. And so we're going to take a look at these two examples in a bit more detail and dive into how the values of voltages, you know, total resistance and current is different between a series and parallel circuit. So taking a look at these examples, in a series circuit, when we think about the current that's flowing through the circuit, the amount of current never actually changes in a series circuit. You start off with 3 amps, and no matter where you take a look at in the circuit, you'll always have 3 amps of current flowing through the wires. However, in a parallel circuit, that isn't necessarily the case. You have 12 amps of current initially that we find here. However, the current actually splits into the different branches. So the first branch here, you get 6 amps, and the second branch, you get 6 amps of current flowing through. Now, the actual value of current is actually dependent on the resistance of that particular branch. But because we have the resistance of this first branch being 1 ohms, because that's the resistance of this resistor, and the second branch also have 1 ohms, that means the resistance of these two branches are exactly equal, so therefore the 12 amps of current will split equally into 6 amps into one branch and 6 amps into the other branch. Now when the branches connect again, it basically combines to form the 12 amps of the original amount of current. So 12 amps is the total current flowing through the entire circuit, however in each of these particular branches, the current actually splits. So that is an important difference between series and parallel. Also, when we talk about the total resistance, in a series circuit, you have the total resistance being simply the sum of all the individual resistances of, in this case, resistors inside the circuit. We've got one resistor being 1 ohms and the second resistor being 2 ohms, so the total resistance in a series is simply 1 plus 1, giving you 2 ohms of total resistance. Uh, however, in a parallel circuit, the formula is a little bit different. It's 1 divided by, if you take a look here on this marker here, 1 divided by total resistance is 1 divided by resistor 1 plus 1 divided by resistor 2. Because the values of both of our resistors is 1 ohms in our particular scenario here, if you plug that into the formula, you will arrive at the fact that the total resistance is 1 over 2, which is 0 0.5. The key idea here is that in a series, if you were to connect more resistors in a series, then you're just basically adding on to the sum. So the more resistors you have, the larger the total resistance of the entire circuit. In a parallel circuit, however, the more resistors you connect in parallel, the lower the total resistance of the circuit. And if you take a look at all the values of the current, the total resistance, everything like that, the numbers actually make sense if you were to put that into a formula. Remember, voltage equals current times resistance. Remember the formula V equals IR. And if you were to apply that formula, V equals I to IR, V equals IR in this particular scenario, then you'll find that all these numbers actually make total sense. So remember, we said that the total sum of resistances 
is equivalent to the total resistance of a series circuit. So we've got 1 ohm added to 1 ohm giving you 2 ohms of total resistance. And so if you think about the EMF of the voltage being 6 volts, then let's calculate and plug that into the formula V equals IR. And so I'm going to try and open this up here. So on this screen scratch, uh, we have V equals IR. And voltage, we're going to consider the EMF, which is 6 volts, giving you current, which let's say we don't know, and the total resistance is 1 added to 1, which is 2. So therefore, 6 divided by 2, which is 3, is actually the current, which is the number that we have over here. You can use this idea to calculate any of the unknowns really. For example, if you wanted to calculate the electromotive force or the voltage supplied by the battery, um, and you didn't know this was 6 volts, simply plug that into the formula again. V equals IR. What we do have is two unknown. Wait, sorry, we've got one unknown, which is the voltage in this case, but we have two knowns, which is the amps, 3, and we've got the total resistance, 1 plus 1 gives you 2, so 3 times 2 is 6, which is exactly the number that we have here. Of course, to put these into the formula and actually derive a result, so you obviously need two known components of V equals IR, and you can calculate the rest of the unknown. But what I'm just trying to say is that everything is making sense numerically when we think about the idea that in a series, resistance is simply the sum of everything, um, but whereas a parallel, you actually have to plug that into the formula which is given over here. But we will go through more calculations in the next video, but anyways, if we continue on with the differences between series and parallel, we've looked at the differences current, we've looked at the differences in resistance, the last thing we have to look at is the differences and how voltage is applied to the components individually. So in a series circuit, what you get is the voltage, the initial voltage or the EMF being split into the different components. And so we've got two resistors here and the potential difference across each of these resistors will be 3 volts each because the initial voltage will actually split amongst the different resistors that are connected in series. However, in a parallel circuit, each branch actually gets the full amount of voltage. So in this particular branch here, branch 1, we're going to name it 1, it gets 6 volts of voltage, and branch 2 gets 6 volts of voltage as well, the complete amount of the initial EMF. So you get 6 volts being applied to this resistor here, and 6 volts being applied to this resistor here as well. So again, to break it down in a series circuit, the voltage becomes split amongst the different components, whereas in a parallel circuit, the voltage, at least when you think about the branches, do not split out, sort of like how the current splits out, that does not happen parallel, the 6 volts maintain it, maintains itself across all branches. Of course, if you have multiple components within that particular branch, for example, you've got, you know, we only have one resistor here in this branch, but if we were to add another resistor, then the 6 volts would actually split across these two components here. And how it splits is dependent on the individual resistances of these resistors. But for now, to put it simply, just please get used to the idea that the voltage is not shared across the different branches, but it maintains itself across each individual branch. And then it can split amongst the components within that branch. But, um, so yeah, you can see that there are multiple differences numerically and uh, between series and parallel circuits, and that is quite important for you to be aware of. Now, obviously, when we take a look at the series circuit, if one of these resistors were to break out, then obviously current would not have the ability to go to the next or the other components within the series. So if you were to break one of these resistors, then the circuit would be broken completely. However, in a parallel circuit, even if one of these resistors were to break off or break and not work, then the current still has the opportunity to flow to the other branch. So therefore, that wouldn't completely break the circuit and the circuit would still sort of work. So we're going to take a look at some critical circuit components 
and here I've listed out all we will be looking at. So the first thing we were going to be looking at is the transistor, which is an electrically operated switch. It's got three terminals, it's got the base, the collector and the emitter as you can see on this diagram here. When a small current enters through the base, a larger current can flow between the collector and the emitter. So basically, depending on how much current or voltage is being passed through to the base, it can either turn on the amount of current that is flowing through from the collector to emitter and that is a more larger current so basically the transistor can amplify current you only need a small amount to pass through from the base to actually activate this and we will look the look at how this is used in other circuits in the end of the video but for now just be aware of the fact that uh, a, a transistor looks like this and it can basically operate as a switch now we're going to be looking at something called potentiometers, but before that I want you to understand the concept of a voltage divider, right? A voltage divider is a simple circuit which turns a large voltage into a smaller one. So using two series resistors and input voltage, um, which we have over here, uh, can be split into you know, different voltages and we get a certain amount of output voltage, which is simply a fraction of the input voltage that we have split. So the actual formula is V out equals V in multiplied by R R2, which is Z2 in this case, the second resistor, which is the resistor down at the very bottom, uh, divided by the total of the first resistor and the second resistor. You don't actually need to know this formula, but what's really important is that the output voltage is purely dependent on the amount of resistance of the second resistor in series, right? So if there's a wire connecting the two, uh, well, you know, the, if there's a wire connected onto this point here, separating the first resistor at the top and the second resistor down at the bottom, the larger the amount of resistance of the second resistor, the larger the amount of output voltage. And this is really important when we look at the concept of how potentiometers work. A potentiometer can give the circuit a certain level of control. For example, volume control. If you're raising the volume on your stereo, most likely what you are doing is adjusting what we call the potentiometer that lies inside the circuit. Fundamentally, a potentiometer can be made from a variable resistor. And a variable resistor works by adjusting the path that a current has to flow. And so if you take a look at this diagram to the right, it is actually very simply put a voltage divider that you see here. So I'm just gonna make another screen sketch, sketch sorry. And uh, if we were to take a look here, remember in the initial uh, example, we had voltage in and we had two resistors. So, I'm just gonna redo that. So we had voltage in and we had two resistors that were connected like this and a wire was connected right in the middle and we call this voltage out. Now this is very similar to the setup over here. Imagine this long block as a resistor that has a length of x which is from the point of connection of this wire over here and y which is the distance between the point of connection down to the bottom of the resistor. What we can do in a variable resistor is we can actually slide the wire up or slide the wire down. What we're doing is adjusting the distances x and y. So obviously if we were to raise the wire and lift it up, y the distance would increase and the distance x would decrease. Why this is relevant is because if you were to raise or lift up the wire, say let's say that we lifted it up to maybe around this point here, then this becomes the distance x and this becomes the distance y. And this is relevant because the larger the amount of distances that y has, the more the resistance. Because if you think back at the resistance of a wire, a longer wire will have a larger resistance 
than a shorter wire because in a shorter wire current has to flow through less but in a longer wire current has to flow through more distances and therefore the resistance increases. Exact same concept, if we were to raise up the wire then the distance y would increase, essentially resist it, the resistance of the segment y would increase and remember the output voltage is really dependent on the bottom part of the resistor. And so just like how the output voltage in this potential divider was determined by the resistance of this second resistor, the same concept applies if you think of x distance and y distance as these two resistors, as y goes up in terms of it lengthens by raising the wire, the amount of resistance will increase there and the output voltage will increase. The same concept applies if you were to think about it the other way around. If we were to lower down the wire, then that means distance x will increase and distance y will decrease. That means the resistance of this particular segment of the resistor will decrease and the output voltage will therefore consequently decrease as well. And so the ability of us to move the wire up and down allows us to control the output voltage in a way that we want. And if you were to connect this output voltage to say an audio unit or something like that then by using a dial which basically allows us to control the wire going up and down on this resistor or this you know um, this variable resistor that can therefore allow us to control the output voltage which inherently controls the uh, volume of the music that you are listening to. So I hope that all makes sense. So as we move on, we are going to be looking at relays, which is also an electrically operated switch. So if we take a look at this relay here on the left hand side, how a relay works is you've got two different circuits. You've got a low current circuit and a high current circuit. Now high current circuits are usually pretty dangerous and you don't want to operate solely on a high current circuit. So what we're going to do is we're going to have a low current circuit that contains a coil. And so as current flows through this low current circuit, the coil becomes magnetized and we took a look at what electromagnetism is. This coil becomes magnetized and so what that happens is, what happens then is that it attracts a metallic switch from the high current circuit. So as you can see, there's a sort of attraction that the electromagnet basically uh, sort of uh, imposes on the switch and therefore it attracts it and it closes off the circuit and the high current circuit therefore gets activated as a result. And so if you want to turn off the high current circuit all you need to do is turn off the low current circuit therefore the coil which was an electromagnet demagnetizes itself and the switch opens again. And again if you want to turn it back on all you need to do is pass through current through the low current circuit which the electromagnet which the coil becomes attracts the switch and it connects or activates the high current circuit so that's a pretty simple concept but a really important one to understand. And so as we move on we're going to take a look at the concept of a diode and so a diode is a component that only allows one way of flow of current through it and that is denoted by the arrow or the direction of the triangle in the circuit diagram. So in this particular example here, it only allows the current to pass through from left to right. If it meets any current going the other way around, it simply blocks it off. And so this property of a diode is used in the conversion of alternating current, which is current where direction always changes periodically, uh, into direct current, which is complete opposite with unidirectional flow of current direction. And we call this rectification. And so if you take a look at this diagram over here, this suggests that it is an alternating current because the uh, graph is oscillating. You've got the peak down at the bottom, you've got the peak up at the top so therefore it's changing directions at each of these time intervals but as soon as you put a diode in this particular circuit you'll find that the current cannot change direction anymore depending on how the diode is set up it only allows one directional flow in a particular direction and cuts off the rest and that's therefore you don't have any of the current or any of the uh the the any of the sort of uh depressions down at the bottom part of the graph simply because it's all been cut off and the current is not allowed to pass through in that particular direction. 
And so we're going to take a look at thermistors, which is basically a component whose resistance increases as the temperature decreases. So it can therefore be used as a temperature sensor. And so this diagram below demonstrates a temperature sensitive circuit. And so what we're going to do is first of all, recognize the fact that this is very similar to what we took a look at when we were taking a look at voltage dividers. Remember, a voltage divider, if I draw out the diagram again, a voltage divider had the input voltage and it was connected by two resistors and this was V out, remember? So imagine this to be V out, imagine this to be the resistor down at the bottom and imagine this to be the resistor up at the top. Right, so that's all making sense so far. So when the temperature rises, what that's going to do is decrease the resistance of the thermistor. Now, what happens when the resistance of the thermistor decreases? Well, in this particular branch from up at the top down at the bottom, remember this power supply is giving you each branch a certain level of voltage, right? So let's just say the electromotive force was 10 volts, right? This whole branch is receiving 10 volts of voltage. Remember, in a within a branch, if you have multiple resistors, then the voltage or the potential difference will be split amongst the individual components within that branch. And if you recall me saying that split depends on the amount of resistance of those resistors. To simply put, the larger the amount of resistance of a resistor, the larger the potential difference across it. So, when we think about the fact that increasing the temperature decreases the resistance of the thermistor, that means that that thermistor takes less of the 10 volts, and this resistor here, which has a fixed resistance, will take more of the 10 volts. When this resistor takes more of the 10 volts, that means that the output voltage, because that is dependent on the amount of voltage of this bottom resistor, will increase as well. At some point, when the second resistor takes in a certain amount of voltage or there's a certain amount of voltage across it and a certain amount of output voltage is uh, determined from that, then that can activate the transistor and allow the current to flow from the collector to emitter and allowing this light bulb to light up. So therefore this is useful in situations where you know you may want to use as a warning light for electric devices such as cookers and hair straighteners or whatnot, uh, as the temperature starts to rise, the resistance of the thermistor decreases. That means it takes less voltage. That means this component, the second resistor takes more voltage, therefore output voltage increases and therefore allows more current to flow through the transistor or the base of the transistor there because obviously there's more voltage across the base uh, of the transistor and therefore allows it to operate and uh, turn on this light bulb here. So looking at a very similar situation, we're going to take a look at the light dependent resistor, which is a component whereby the resistance of the component decreases as light intensity increases. So this is a very similar concept to the thermistor. And so this can be used mainly as a light sensor. And this diagram below demonstrates how uh, it can be used as a light sensitive circuit. So you're gonna, you're gonna get this, uh, you're gonna have this light dependent resistor down at the bottom here, as you can see. And you've this time got the resistor, which is fixed of fixed resistance up at the top. Now, when light intensity decreases or when it gets dimmer outside, you'd obviously want this light to light up. And so how that works is if you connect the circuit like this, once the light intensity decreases, that means the resistance will start to increase in the light dependent resistor. So as it gets, as light goes, gets dimmer, the resistance of the light dependent resistor will increase. So what that means is as the resistance increases, this light dependent resistor will take more of the voltage and this resistor will take less of the voltage. So when this takes more of the voltage, as we've discussed before, then there is more output voltage. 
and that translates to the voltage across the base of the transistor and at some point when that voltage surpasses a certain level then the transistor can work and allow this light switch to work and therefore emit light under dark circumstances. So that is basically all I wanted to discuss with you guys today. I know a lot of these concepts are quite confusing, but I hope that clarified a couple of things. Uh, thanks for watching this video. Please like, share and subscribe and I will join